Mr. Henri de Castre, thank you very much indeed for coming in to speak to us. Now, your first half earnings quadrupled on gains from asset disposals, strong operating profits. Can this performance be sustained? Well, I think the uh, important thing is to look at the operating profits. Uh, in the businesses we have, property casualty, health and protection, and savings and asset management, earnings have been improving, and we are very well aligned with our long-term plans. Of course, there is a lot of macro uncertainty uh, in, in the US, in Europe, but we are confident that the uh, things which are in our hands, like underwriting, pricing, are going to continue to be in good shape. A great deal of uncertainty in the US and Europe, but I guess that's part of the reason that you'll be relying on Asia to drive growth going forward. And AXA is reallocating capital towards emerging markets. Where do you see potential takeover opportunities, particularly after taking full control of your Asian units earlier on this year? Well, I mean, first we are pleased to see that uh, uh, both revenues and earnings are going up strongly in Asia and in the other emerging countries like Turkey, Mexico. Uh, our operations in the major countries are also uh, going well, especially in the, uh, in the U.S. As far as expansion opportunities are concerned, well, we look at the emerging markets, Asia, uh, Latin America, but also countries like Turkey, where we have just completed uh, a new deal, which is reinforcing our market share in property casualty. So we have a very strong foothold in major markets, but we want to accelerate the pace in emerging to accelerate the revenue growth of the group. And so would uh, potential M&A deals takeovers be part of that strategy in emerging markets, particularly Asia? Well, they could, but as you know, there are not a lot of opportunities there. So organic growth there is also important. And now that we have a strong foothold in these markets, building on the agreements we have with some very strong local partners, as an example in the area of Banque Assurance, is a reason to think that our revenues will, uh, will grow. If on top of that we can find interesting opportunities, of course we will look at them. Today's earnings don't take into account the significant market turmoil that we've seen over the past few weeks with U.S. debt talks and now broader concerns over the U.S. economy itself, not forgetting the debt concerns right here in Europe in this region. What does all this mean for AXA and your 2015 profit targets? Well, I mean, first, these are short-term turbulences and the long-term targets are long-term targets by definition. So I think we have to step back a little bit. I think the targets we have for the long run remain very realistic. We have in June given to the markets sensitivities on these targets, depending on the way the uh, macro situation is going to go. Uh, I think as far as the current turmoil is concerned, we are probably at the end of a phase where the governments in the developed countries have been spending too much. They have to adjust in some countries by raising taxes because they still have margins for that in others by cutting spending because it's really the spending level which is a problem. It's a painful adjustment, mm. but it's a necessary one. And the sooner it's going to be done, the sooner the growth is going to resume. It's interesting that you say these debt problems are essentially short-term challenges. If the macro situation, if economic conditions worsen in the US and Europe, how does that affect your profit targets in the next few years, 2015? Well, I mean, we, uh, we will see, but we should not forget that the world growth for 2011 will very probably be around or a little more than 4%. This is hardly a bad number. We will see what 2012 is. Of course, if the growth is slower, the, uh, the expansion of our property casualty activities will be more modest. Uh, if the markets are very turbulent, of course, we could see less growth on the life and saving side. But overall, we are comforted by what we have seen during the first semester, which is an accelerated expansion in the emerging markets, better margins in the major markets. And for all what is under our control, we will continue our efforts. And I'm convinced they will bear fruit. But the outlook for the US specifically, the possibility of a double dip there? I mean, we'll see, I'm not an economist, yeah. but the, uh, it's clear that the growth uh, uh, is slowing. 
in our business, we had a very good first half. Uh, we don't like seeing long-term rates being so low, but it's also probably a sort of intermediate situation mm. because it's a paradox to say on one hand that there is too much debt, and on the other hand to see the cost of this debt being so low. Okay, and what does a weakening U.S. economy then mean for your investments uh, and your life insurance and asset management businesses there? Well, it, it probably means something which uh, uh, will be slightly more challenging, like for everybody else. But what is important for us are the long-term trends, and we remain convinced that if the U.S. are putting in place a reasonable program in terms of cutting back the deficits, this is going to be good for the U.S. growth in the long run. What about the European debt crisis? You have exposure to Greek debt and other government bonds. How do you see this playing out? Are you worried about contagion? Well, I mean, the, uh, uh, it depends what you mean by contagion. The fact that the markets are uh, nervous and volatile these days, uh, it's a fact. I mean, it's an evidence. Having said that, I think you need to step back and look at the fundamentals. I think the euro governance, even if it's in a sort of protracted process, has been progressing very significantly over the last two years, very, very significantly. There are things which have been happening which would not have been considered as, as, as realistic two or three years ago. So Look at the EFSF. To, you're not looking to then potentially reduce your holdings in, in government bonds in no. Europe? Well, I mean, we have a very significant exposure to Europe. By the way, uh, the evolution of the rates in the recent days is such because our exposure to the French and to the German bonds is larger than our exposure to Italian, Spanish or Greek bonds. The evolution is such that we have today more capital gains, unrealized capital gains, than the unrealized capital gains we had mm. at the end of the first semester. So, uh, uh, I mean, we, we are looking at that uh, uh, very attentively, but we think that the governments are, I would say, progressively making the right steps to bring the situation under control. But I suppose politics sometimes gets in the way, and you mentioned your exposure to France, and next year is a, is a presidential year, 2012. Is this going to make it that much more difficult to make the necessary spending cuts, the unpopular policy decisions uh, that will ultimately result in bringing down the deficit? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not a politician, but if I read what the uh, politicians have been saying and, and I would say the serious candidates from both sides over the last weeks, uh, the fact that an excessive debt is an issue has been at the center of all what they've been saying. So I think the degree of concern and the degree of awareness has never been as high. Having said that, we will see what they do when it's elected, but I think there is now a real, uh, um, I would say, a consciousness of the fact that deficits need to be cut and that this has to be done through cutting spending more than through increasing taxes. You mentioned that there has been a clear impact in the equity markets. Are you adjusting your strategy with equity investments? Well, our equity investments in the uh, balance sheet of the company are modest. I mean, if you look at our asset allocation, uh, the equity exposure uh, listed equities is 4 percent and we have something which is approximately equivalent in alternative investments. Mm -hmm. We do not intend to change that dramatically. So you'll maintain We that. have significant capital gains there. Uh, we are not going to change that dramatically. Thank you so much, Mr. Henri de Castre. Appreciate your time. Thank you very Thank much. You.